And now back into the outdoors. Oh, you're back. All this diversity in plants and how we use plants wouldn't be worth beans if plants couldn't reproduce, right? Did you know that many types of plants depend on other living creatures for help in their reproduction? It's all about the birds and the bees. More specifically, the ones that work here, insect pollinators. You've heard the old saying, as busy as a bee? Here's how it all works. Many plants produce fruit that holds their reproductive seeds. You know, like a tomato, apple, or a peach. That fruit or seed begins as a flower. The flower contains a stigma, which is the female reproductive part. But before it can turn into fruit, the stigma needs to receive male pollen grains from the stamen. And the transfer of that reproductive pollen is where these living pollinators play their vital role. About 80% of plants require cross-pollination from one plant to another. And most plants require biotic pollination from living creatures. Insects are important pollinators, especially bees and butterflies. They don't intentionally pollinate. It just happens as they feed on the nectar and pollen from the flowers. All that flapping and buzzing dislodges pollen grains that stick to their hairy legs. And when they visit another flowering plant, some of the male pollen on their body gets stuck on the stigma. And presto, you get a pollinated flower that will now begin growing into a fruit or seed. If you think about it, those plants and pollinators share what's called a symbiotic relationship. The insects get food from the plants, while in return helping the plants pollinate and reproduce. Some types of plants called legumes have a different kind of symbiotic relationship. It happens below ground and plays a vital role in the process of nitrogen fixation, with the help of bacteria. These little legumes form a symbiotic relationship or a beneficial partnership with certain bacteria that convert atmospheric nitrogen into a form that plants can use. This rhizobium bacterium enters the roots of the legume and forms root nodules or bumps on the roots of the soybean. Inside the nodule, these tiny bacteria convert atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia. Ammonia is then converted by other soil bacteria into forms of nitrogen the plants can use, like nitrate and nitrite. These bacteria need an oxygen-free environment to do their work. The legume scoops up any oxygen that can slow down the work of the bacteria. So the legume gives the bacteria food with their roots and the right oxygen-free conditions inside the root nodule. In turn, the bacteria give the plant usable nitrogen so it can grow and reproduce. Some of that extra nitrogen even makes its way back into the soil surrounding the plant. Even with all the diversity that plants have in symbiotic relationships to help them reproduce and grow, they have one relationship that's universal with all plants, and that's their relationship with sunlight, water, and air. Those are the building blocks that plants need to grow using their incredible process of photosynthesis. Now there's one of the prime secrets to life. Where? All around us, silly. These plants, every single one of them, are using inorganic chemicals to make organic compounds. That's the foundation of life. Are you sure? I don't know. It's called photosynthesis. They use a combination of sunlight and a few chemicals to produce, well, life. See, those plants take in water, H2O, and carbon dioxide from the air, CO2. Chloroplasts in the leaves, the green stuff, use sunlight to convert those chemicals into sugar and oxygen. I get it now. It makes sense. Two chemicals that are in a reaction, which create compounds that feed the plant and give us oxygen to breathe. Another process that's constantly taking place here in the forest is the water cycle. Water moves through plants by transpiration, or the evaporation of water at the surface of leaves and stems. Plants absorb water into their roots for moisture in the soil. Water travels up through cells in their stems and branches, then exits the plant through pores in their leaves. This water vapor collects in the atmosphere, which can form clouds. And when the clouds become saturated, 
grain falls to the ground, and the process begins all over again. To study all this cool plant science in your classroom, go to IntoTheOutdoors.org. Coming up, how many diverse ways can we use this plant's kernel? You'll be surprised. Don't go away. There's more Into the Outdoors.